Hey folks, this is Johnny. Uh, welcome to another home studio trainer show. Uh, so I want to thank everybody who uh, came in and checked out my advanced tempo detection video I did last night. Lots of great questions, lots of uh, really uh, good opinions on using it. and uh, But some of the questions actually raised a couple questions. <laughs> so I wanted to try to address those right here. So uh, let's see. Uh, thanks again uh, for uh, for checking it out. It is again uh, one of my favorite features now. If you use this in, uh, in tune with uh, something like the uh, stem separator. Oh man, the stuff that you can do with a single song is awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the classroom. All right. So if you remember, this is the song that I worked with last night. Whoops, try it this way. You never let me drown, but there I was, I was drowning. And here's the original. And here's the added percussion. That's it, just that. <laughs> okay. So, the first thing that is important here, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm still a little phlegmy, um, is the fact that when you actually do the tempo detection, it is not syncing the track to the tempo. Uh, it is actually syncing the tempo map to the track. Which is why any kind of MIDI file or percussion file that has tempo data in it uh, will automatically sync to whatever the song is doing. So I think it's important to remember that what we're looking at here is we're looking at Studio One being adjusted to follow the song, not vice versa. So if you are using multi-tracks, you're not going to be able to take multiple tracks and sync them all up you're only going to be able to actually take one of the multi-tracks, at least as far as I know. If you guys if you guys know something I don't, please put it in the comments. <clears throat> so what's happening here, if you got multi-tracks, you need to take the one that has the tempo, like the drum track or even a guitar track, a rhythm guitar track, and you need to use that to create the tempo map because Studio One is not going to sync the song itself to Studio One's tempo. That's important to remember because the song still has the varied tempos. Studio One is just following it. And since Studio One's grid or tempo map is following the song, not vice versa, any kind of MIDI loop or um, audio loop that has uh, tempo data in it will automatically sync up with your song. So remember, Studio One is following the song, not vice versa. So multiple... Uh, a multi-track song, you can't sync them all together to the map. At least not as far as I know. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't figured out how to do that, if it is an option, but I don't think it is. So the other question that came up is what happens if I adjust the tempo? the actual song tempo. And if you look here, it's 80. If you look here, it's 76. If you look here, it, it uh, goes up to 82. So if, depending on the position of the cursor, I think all I'm gonna do is mess up the tempo map because since there are no bend markers in the song itself, the song is not going to follow the tempo if I change it. Shall we try it? All right, let me do a quick save so I can get back to this. And I'm going to choose this part right here. So if I choose, you see, this one is actually pretty consistent at 80. So let me go. Now, I could be wrong. I could be wrong here. So if I do that, <clears throat> I am going to change the tempo. So let's watch and see what happens. Ready? I'm going to adjust the tempo. Now, that's interesting. <laughs> I am seeing something I didn't expect. I am seeing something I didn't expect. 
So now, if I raise and lower the tempo, is it actually adjusting? So if I go up to 102, is the song going to follow it? Oh my god. All right, so now <laughs> my mind is blown. So now if I open up the inspector, wow, man, I can't believe I didn't check this first. If I open up the inspector, okay, I've got the map. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to prove the tempo. Um, if, is there bend markers? No, I don't see any bend markers. I, I I still don't know how this would work with multi-tracks. But if I'm looking at this correctly. If I'm looking at this correctly. <clears throat> it actually sped up the song. Now, I did not expect this. I did not expect this. So... What if, <clears throat> what if I, how could I actually change everything to, let's say I wanted this song. Now, this is completely experimental, folks. What if I wanted to change the song to 80? Can I highlight? I'm not quite sure how to do this, be honest with you guys. Can I highlight all? See, Control A. All right, I've highlighted all these. Can I change this to 80? No. All right, that didn't work. But I was able to change this one to 80. But, but you see what I got going on here? This is incredible. So if I do this... No, that's not going to work because the tempo is dictated by the position. Let's see here. Yeah, it's, it's still changing as the cursor moves. So how would that work? Let's see, can I change this to 80? So 82, can I just go like this? Oh my God. <laughs> no, I cannot hear you. I feel you every so I actually changed it to 77. So if I go to 80. You so you can see, oh, this is just. This is just mind-boggling. Again, I don't know how this would work with multiple tracks. I assume you would have to do this with each one. But if you look at this, I mean, this is advanced, advanced tempo detection. So I've got the whole song now at 80, and you can see where it slowed down some of the parts that Wayne and I speeded up. Uh, Wayne, Mike, and I sped up at. Sometimes. So, did you guys see what I did there? So, let me go back. I'm just going to keep undoing to go back to the original before I started messing with it. Undo, 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 undo. I'm undoing. Actually, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to close. I don't want to save. And I'm just going to reopen it. <clears throat> All right, there it is. Okay. So, so now this advanced, advanced tempo detection, if I want 
so it, <laughs> my mind is going crazy here. Uh, so initially, I said that the that when you do the tempo detection, it changes the tempo map to follow the song and all of its tempo changes. And in doing so, any kind of loop or MIDI loop that you bring in will follow. So now it looks like if I decide I want the song, I want the song to follow a steady tempo, all I have to do is grab one of the areas here. Let's see, I want to go to 80. Let's see if I can get this to 82. Boom. And if I open up Oh, I didn't actually do this. Maybe I might have to do this again. But let's see. Ben Markers. Oh, no, it did it. It did it. So you can see here in the green areas, this is where the song is actually at 82. In the red areas, you can see where the tempo mapping actually adjusted the song to now follow the consistent, not changing tempo. <laughs> I don't know what to say, guys. I was completely wrong in my assumption. So this is awesome. This is really awesome. <clears throat> so I think what I should do, <laughs> I think I should just all of both of these videos and do a full one on all of the options that the tempo mapping actually does. All right, I'm gonna leave this video up for a while. So tell me what you guys think. Should I do one all-encompassing video, something that's a little bit shorter but goes through all of the features? What do you guys think about this? You can sync this, uh, the Studio One tempo map to the song and you can sync the um, the actual audio file to the tempo map. So if I make this faster, let me see if I can make this faster. So if I decide to speed up my song, let's say I want to go to 92. Look at that. This is just nuts. Nuts. I've got to do this on my live stream. This, <laughs> this is crazy. Tell me what you guys think in the comments. I'll see you guys uh, in the next video. Thanks for checking out this video. And if you want to find more Home Studio Trainer content, it is very, very simple. And all of the links are in this description. So if you actually go to hst-homestudiotrainer.com, there is a new Studio One 7 lineup for all the new videos coming out. You can also go to my usual uh, YouTube channel where you will find every new release and every video that I have posted out there. You can go to Rumble. If you're a Rumble user, you will find all of my latest videos and a bunch of Studio One 6 videos. You can also go to Patreon if you actually want to support me uh, financially. You can see I've got uh, 44 paid members and... I've got 93 total members, a bunch of free members in there. There's all sorts of benefits and things that you'll get that you can't get on any of my other channels. If you like the content that I make on YouTube, but you don't want to subscribe or become Patreon, you can actually go to buy me a coffee and I can go ahead and uh, donate a few bucks to the cost. Really appreciate it. And last but not least, if you're a Facebook user and you want to get some one-on-one -on -one help, you can go to my Facebook page over at HST Home... Uh, uh, Studio One support group. <laughs> so you can go in there and you can post a question. You can get answers pretty quickly. There are 5,000 people in there and it's growing slowly, but um, most of them are really, really helpful. So feel free to post a question in there or you can just PM me direct or, uh, directly there as well. All right. So I hope you guys found that helpful. If you made it through this part of the video, Thank you very much. I do appreciate it, and I will see you all in the next video.